Hey friends, and welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we are going to do a garden tour, basically of all the gardens here at Creekside Nursery and the house. So this is going to be a nice, hopefully very inspiring, fun, informative video where you get to see all of the gardens that we have here, like I said, at our house and at Creekside Nursery. So, just as a little reference in case you're uh, new to Gardening with Creekside, we are a grower retailer uh, garden center here in Dallas, North Carolina, zone 7B. We are just west of Charlotte. So what does it mean to be a grower retailer? That means that we grow plants that we sell directly to our customers at the garden center here um, on our property. We do have eight and a half acres. That is where the vast majority, um, not if all of our gardens and the retail garden center is located. And then we have our production facilities on an additional uh, 24 acres. So we are going to show you um, and give you updates on these gardens. My husband, Jerry, and I built our house here uh, 19 years ago, and it was literally in the middle of a field. My dad was a farmer, and so this is uh, this piece of property was a field that he farmed. So any uh, trees, any flowers, any structures that you see, that is what we have added and planted and developed over the last 19 years. Some of the gardens are brand new, less than a year, and some have been here since we have moved in. So without further ado, we're gonna get started. I will tell you that you are going to see some weeds today. Folks, we do have eight and a half acres and it is extremely hard, as you know, to maintain that. We do not have a full-time uh, garden crew that maintains all of these gardens. So you're probably going to see some weeds and you're probably going to see some edges of beds that need to be addressed and things like that. This is real life, folks. These uh, gardens are maintained by us. Yes, some are in better conditions than others, but again, real life. And so we're going to show them to you as they are. And I will explain, yes, this needs a little bit of love or hey, look how amazing this looks. So we're going to have fun together. So get comfy, get your favorite beverage of choice and let's get going. Now behind me, you will see we are standing in front of what we call um, the cottage garden. Cottage garden consists of these two beds. I really say that they are sisters. They are not identical twins. So they have plants that repeat on both sides. General overview, cottage garden. Then we have five garden boxes that I do um, vegetables and cut flowers in. Behind that, we call it hydrangea hill because it's got uh, two different kinds of hydrangeas in there. And then beyond that is the new chicken coop that we have installed uh, just here in the last couple of weeks with the girls in that. Cottage garden is one of, um, I just adore this space because it's highly visible. It is right along our driveway. We see it all the time. And this is where I have fun just developing big, bold colors. There's tons of perennials in here. Like most of my gardens, um, as the gardens have developed, the perennials have gotten bigger and I have less room for annuals. And in this space, that is perfectly fine with me. So we've got lots of daylilies that are in all of their glory right now. Um, just to kind of give you an overview that this is uh, a native Amsonia. Amsonia does really great here. It is an early spring bloomer. Um, then throughout the growing season, you have this great fine foliage on it. You can prune this. Like I need to go ahead and shear this back uh, by maybe like a third to a half and it will flush back out with new growth that's nice and tight and won't get floppy, um, but it will not rebloom. But this makes great, like you can cut it and put it in some flower arrangements and it gives you some really fun texture. So we've got native Amsonia, uh, Ruby spider. Now, I've told you before that I don't go through and deadhead my daylilies. Um, it is really just a time thing, but what you can do, right, and you can see it's gotten in there. Um, so if you want a deadhead, you can come through during the day um, in the morning and you just pull these off, right? It's not necessary as far as the blooms. It just cleans the plant up so that you can see those big, beautiful, beautiful blooms. I do adore Ruby spider because it's such a big, bold color um, and it's just great. I have not divided these. These have just been hanging out here for the past, gosh, what, four years. So we got Ruby spider. Then down here is the Shalom Peony display. It is a nice, 
petite daylily. Nice, soft, kind of a buttery yellow. It is what they, it's a double bloom, right? So a lot of people don't even realize that this is a daylily, but it is. These daylilies are all from Proven Winners and have, like I said, have been here since the bed was created uh, four years ago. I've got some Nefofia in here. Irises from a sweet friend, that beautiful Nefofia, nice pale yellow, and you can see <laughs> Uh, that it has a beautiful ombre effect to it. So right, the older blooms down at the bottom are nice, almost white, and then it comes up to a lovely yellow. The beast behind that is a lemon meringue baptisia. So let me show you how big this thing is, right? So I am five foot two, five foot three on a good day, and look at this. I mean, my arm length, this is every bit of five feet wide. This thing has been in here, again, since we planted the bed. It is a big, beautiful beast. Love it. Baptisia, you can shear back as well. Just like your Amsonia, you can cut it back, which I need to because she's coming over so far into the garden boxes. Won't rebloom. It just makes it nice and tight. Um, but Baptisias are going to be some of your longest living perennials in your garden. And I tell folks, you want to, when you plant it, make sure that you um, have it in a spot where you want it because it will get huge and they have really long, deep tap roots. So they don't transplant well. So kind of think about where you want to have it. And if you, if you want to plant other things around it, be prepared to move those things and not the Baptisia because you could very well lose it because you just simply can't get all of the roots. So I have one here and then I have one over there. Nosferatu, this is another uh, Rainbow Rhythm Daylily from Proven Winners. It is a really deep, deep purple. It is a later bloomer. It has just now started blooming. Um, like I said, really rich purple. Has a little bit of a ruffled edge on it. Great. And it pairs so nicely with Primal Scream. Primal Scream is that beautiful Clemson orange daylily that is just massive. Primal Scream is... Primal Scream and Ruby Spider are some of the earliest blooming. So they're going to be the ones that bloom first for us, um, but just massive pops of color. That is what I love about this flower bed is that we have big, bold colors in there. And I added, look at this, the Princess Anne. Uh, this is a David Austin Rose Standard. Like I said, this is Princess Anne. She was added just this spring and man, she is doing great. I love how we have, you know, five or six blooms in a nice big cluster right there. She is getting to be on the end of her bloom cycle. Um, and with those roses, after they finish blooming, you wanna come in here and prune. I'll show you some of my other David Austins that I have already pruned back, um, but just a beautiful, nice, hot pink flower. Um, smells amazing. And so when you, after it blooms, you deadhead, you trim it back, then of course you're gonna get more flowers because roses bloom on new growth. So don't be afraid to prune your roses. It will do, uh, it will serve you well for sure. We just recently added some Agastache and some Achillea and some Nepeta. We just like the other week, they are doing well. In fact, we have a sweet little bumblebee right here enjoying the uh, royal raspberry. Uh, so that Agastache is doing great as is, like I said, the, um, that is a beautiful little allium. Alliums, of course, are great because they are deer resistant, rabbit resistant. Basically, they're, they're onions, right? So they belong to the onion family. Nice oniony flavor. Then we have, this is gonna be a new introduction from Proven Winners next year. This is their white scavola. I decided to go ahead and put it at the base of Princess Anne. It will form an absolute carpet. So these plants will fill in, loves the heat because yes, we are blessed this morning with the beautiful clouds because we're gonna get rain later on today. Typically, we'd already be in the full sun right here. So lots and lots of sun in this bed. Definitely a full sun area. Um, we're just under cloud coverage today. So white scavola. Banana cream too. You're going to see banana cream too in the garden um, in multiple places. Fantastic, amazing daisy from Proven Winners. I love it because you get all sorts of various colors, right? So your buds are beautiful creamy yellow. Your new flowers are yellow and then they age to a nice soft white. 
This is a plant though that does do well if you can deadhead it. You can see we have got a couple of older blooms right here. If you just come in like once a week, come in and then just prune it down to right here, that will help. It cleans up the plant, makes it look nicer, but it also encourages new growth. So with this perennial, it does do well to deadhead it. We've got some beautiful spider wart. This, oh my gosh, this thing has been in here, uh, I think since the original bed was planted. And then the years passed, it was like, meh, it did okay. I don't know what's different about this year. Maybe it's because of all the rain or it's cool, but loving it. This is Charlotte's Web. We grew this years ago at the nursery. Um, but yeah, so Charlotte's Web, spider wart, and then behind that, we have some butterfly weed. So this is a native plant. This is a host plant for your monarchs. And um, she's doing great nice beautiful bright orange flowers in there um, so yeah we're just going to leave her alone and let her grow and be happy and hopefully we will have some uh, little monarch babies on that another nosferatu in here these are our um, some of our only annuals that we put in here these are the supertunia mini vista hot pinks so we put them kind of up on the side of the the steps coming up and then we have the rockin playing the blue no deep blue suede <laughs> always get playing the blues and blue suede shoes this is blue suede shoes blue suede shoes on each side so this right here um, we do have another blue suede shoes on each side um, these are the only annuals right so we just put some annuals in here because i am losing space because my perennials are getting so big i don't mind a bit another agastache this is the queen nectarine just repeating some of those plants right um, from one side to the next they are not exactly planted in the same location they are just repeated so that brings some uniformity to the bed and it makes your eye um, just flow really really well we have um we are big fans of the Heartwood birdhouses. This is such a cutie. This was supposed to go for sale at the nursery. And when I was unpacking them, I was like, oh no, you're going in my garden. I think this might not be offered anymore, but Heartwood birdhouses is super cute. They're out of Star, Mississippi, a family company. So you can check them out. We do have some available for sale here at the nursery, but that is where that came from. Liatris. Liatris is a great, uh, what we call non-branded. That means you can find it just about anywhere. Wonderful perennial. Um, they use it a lot in, in like cut flower arrangements because it does these beautiful stalks of purple flowers. Planted this last year here. I believe I planted maybe like two clumps, kind of one on each side of the birdhouse great pollinator attractor but just really fun vertical interest in your garden so we have got some liatris and again more things are repeated like you have your day lilies again we do have a butterfly bush in here so do i have a butterfly bush on the other side nope but i have one here so that complements everything really well on this side the minarda got a couple little minardas in here babe the pig so a lot of people ask about the pig so this is babe babe is a unique stone piece really fun there my dad was a uh, hog farmer when i was growing up so he raised pigs so we have babe here and then these are some sweet little solar lights that i got from a company um, ordered them online they sent me a catalog which was smart on their part but not good for me um, wind and weather so wind and weather does all sorts of really cute whimsical garden art and different kinds of things like that so these are like glass blown ornaments but they are solar lights so they have a solar panel and a light in there so they just kind of glow very nicely at night now moving on up to the garden boxes we haven't talked specifically about the garden boxes this year um, just because we've been doing so many other things so but basically in here i do we do garden but it is just for uh obviously for our family we used to do acres of vegetables we have pared it down to these five so i enjoy it we have basil like we have cucumbers back here and uh, basil this is the amazel basil from proven winners if you can ever find and grab an amazel basil you need to and unless your family eats copious amounts of basil and pesto you only need one plant this thing will get huge by the end of the season 
It is a Genovese type basil, does just taste divine, but this is one plant and it's only gonna get bigger. We've got some sunflowers in here, branching sunflowers. They're in here. Marigolds go down the middle. Started those as seeds. I just direct sowed those um, because marigolds are a great deterrent for bugs in your garden. And then these are, have you ever heard of these? These are ground cherries. Ground cherries, I got the seed from Johnny's um, Select Seeds. Love that company. Our neighbor though told us about this plant this vegetable um, last year, they found some of the fruit at the our local farmer's market. But a ground cherry is, it'll do a tomato, but I'll let Jerry get in here. It reminds you of like a tomatillo. So you can see right here, there's a husk that will form over the little tomato. And then when they are ripe, they will drop. So that's why they're called ground tomatoes that they'll drop on the ground and then and then of course you eat them. So they I've never grown these before. I've never even tasted them before, but Matt and Lisa said they were the most divine things they have ever had. So we're trying them. My cucumbers are volunteers from last year. I had cucumbers here um, last year, grew them and they, you know, so can't get all to the cucumbers. So some of them dropped and the seeds were still in there. And then these came up this spring. Clearly I need to do some harvesting. Look at those. Are they not beautiful? I mean, we have been eating them, but man, look at that beautiful cucumber. This little trellis is from Gardener Supply. Great support. And then on the other side, I planted another batch of cucumbers. We've got jalapenos and tomatoes. These tomatoes right here, sun gold tomatoes, again, from last year's seed that dropped in the beds. Um, clearly, I need to stake this one. <laughs> I was waiting on some more supports. These are from Gardener Supply. They are fantastic. This area gets a lot of direct wind and storms, and I would always have problems with my tomato cages falling over. Not these things. These are the Titan. Um, I think extra large, extra tall tomato cages, and they work great. So, um, got a little thunder action going on in there. I don't know if you heard that. Uh, this bed is herbs. This is oregano. I know at some point we're going to have to do something with this, uh, but there you go. We can cut it and throw it in with the chicken coop. Clematis from Proven Winners, and this is the pink mink really fun it, it has covered this obelisk really well nice soft pink flowers people that have asked about this bed this is the bed that has the um, daughter daughter is an invasive weed i got it from other um, seeds that i had ordered and it was in this flower bed so it came in here so we have really laid down the pre-emergent we need to take this out and get rid of it we just have not had time and so i use a pre-emergent so that it will not um, germinate and get onto any other plants these are zinnias i planted the zinnias as plants so i started them inside and then transplanted them over and they are doing just fine the last bed has not been planted yet so there you go we've got caladiums in our unique stone urns uh, back through here caladiums do really well um, you can see what i'm talking about right here with the lemon meringue She's just a little, she's just a little aggressive. Um, but up here on Hydrangea Hill, um, this is this is a bed that needs has had zero attention this year. So yes, the weeds are prolific. Uh, it desperately needs to be mulched. I fully understand that, and it will happen at some point. Uh, these are little lime hydrangeas, great panicle hydrangea, getting ready to explode in color. Um, little limes around here sometimes are not so little. This is gonna be every bit already of five feet, but massive, beautiful, creamy white panicle blooms. Um, just a great plant. I have some of the edge of night hibiscus back here, planted them later. And then of course, we have the firelight hydrangeas, which are absolutely gorgeous. This hill is going to be stunning. And then of course, we were just at the chicken coop last week when we planted um, the annuals up there. Now. We're going to transition over here to um, so you can see get a kind of a perspective of everything our shade garden over here on the side of the house so we're going to kind of start by the garage this year we're testing out the 
Selenia begonias from Proven Winners. This is the Selenia apricot. And we have been so impressed with these plants. We have the apricot here, and then we have the yellow on the back porch. And they are just absolutely great plants. Nice, full, double bloom, really pretty. There are two plants in here. Uh, they're due for a nice dose of fertilizer. But yeah, next year, be on the lookout for the selenias. You will really, really enjoy them. We just added a piece right here. This bench was on our front porch, but when we got the joggling board, we moved it over here. And Jerry said, we need, a, we need like a unique stone piece over here. And you know me, I was like, I'm on it. I got it. So we got a Invincible Ruby Hydrangea grows develops will be beautiful here and then of course as we move down the shade garden um, it is looking just fantastic in this area the, all of the hay racks window boxes are planted the same they have the lemon blush caladiums in there and then they have the double delight primrose begonias really nice soft yellow with a little peachy color in there filling in we have not had a lot of heat yet this spring so my caladiums yes they are growing but they are not absolutely like massive takeoff because the heat and the humidity has not hit yet this bed is filled with beautiful hostas and brunnera and um let's see eucharas and we've got some jack in the pulpits and ferns all sorts of fun things in here this is an Aurelia Sun King. There's actually two of these plants right here. Great shade perennial, gives you a beautiful pop of color in your garden. It loves where it is because every time I water the hay rack, this gets watered. This bed is not on irrigation. Um, so I am having to keep them kind of trimmed back this year because they are, they are very happy right here, but that is not a problem whatsoever and then look at this beautiful brunera under here this is queen of hearts just a great great shade perennial you can treat it very much like a hosta it is more deer resistant than hostas because the leaves are very hairy they have a, a quite a texture to them they are not smooth and silky like a hosta but you can mix them in together like with the wiggles and squiggles hostas um, all sorts of great things and then coming on down of course, right, Linton roses, hellebores. This is not their season, but look at that. And it is in gorgeous bloom starting like in November. Ferns, lamian. Lamian is a great perennial ground cover. This is pink Chablis from Proven Winners. We sell it at the nursery as an annual, but for us, it is a perennial. There were three plants that I planted last summer. In the wintertime, it is a nice evergreen, so you have that great foliage. It's not as lush as it is right now, but it is a continuous bloomer of those beautiful soft pink flowers. If it gets too aggressive, you can easily trim it back. Um, but this is a wonderful, great ground cover um, through here. This year, I added a white wedding hydrangea. I did have a hydrangea here before, but it was a hydrangea that bloomed on old growth, old wood, not new. And so because of where we are, this location, it is not protected. So it would, like I would get very few blooms because of those late spring freezes. And I just got too tired of not having flowers on my hydrangea because this is like prime real estate. I want to have beautiful flowers right here. So. I put in a white wedding. This is a panicle hydrangea from Southern Living. It is one of the most shade tolerant uh, perennial, uh, excuse me, shade tolerant panicle hydrangeas because this space gets probably a total of five to six hours of direct sun throughout the whole day. But clearly she's doing just fine and she's going to pop out in um, blooms really soon. All right, behind me is the daylilies and the burn. So let's go check those out. This daylily hedge is in the front of our house. It separates the kind of good yard from the field out in front of the house. Um, it is in all of its glory right now. So we wanted to make sure that we did a garden tour while these beautiful things are in full bloom. These are, I have no clue what variety these are. I just say these are traditional yellow daylilies. 
So the story, the backstory is when Jerry and I built our house 19 years ago, nothing is flat here at Creekside. Everything is on a slope because it goes towards the creek. We had really big water issues because we moved in in January. Well, you can't have grass in January unless you put sod down. Well, we had just built a house. We didn't have any money to put sod down. So my mom was like, okay, I have got these ye yellow daylilies. Let's divide them out and we will plant a double hedge right here because it'll help stop the water from running. That is what we did. Jerry, my mama and I planted these and they were just little daylilies. These are all from her garden. They are, like I said, a double row window paned in here and they have been growing and thriving for the past 19 years. They are massive. They are beautiful. Common yellow daylily did not cost us a penny to do this. Um, I just, like I said, got them from my mom and then voila. So they always start blooming very reliably, really about what middle of June bloom for several weeks on end and then we have great foliage for the rest of the season. Some people uh, don't like daylilies because they only bloom for a short amount of time, but I tell you what, this is absolutely worth it. I will take the foliage only for you know the rest of the year. That does not bother me. This is glorious and I love it because when we're sitting on our front porch, this is what we see and they are beautiful. Uh, we do not have deer issue because people always ask, well, you know, do you have deer? Yes, we have deer here, but again, we are incredibly blessed to live in a very natural area. Like we do not have a lot of houses on top of us. So we have lots of oak trees and native food for these deer to eat. So they leave our plants alone. This uh, bed right here um, is we have, this is what we plant <laughs> in an annual. This is the only thing annuals that we plant in this bed. Jerry started this red perennial hibiscus from seed years and years ago. So we have this beautiful, nice, we got our first bloom on it yesterday. Um, it is one of those big dinner plate blooms. Um, so this will get nice and big. Again, we have not had heat yet. So when the heat hits, this will get nice and big. This is the lemon tart lantana from Proven Winners. And so we have got them in here. We also have them next door. So we have lemon tart right here. And then this is the Bewitched Green with Envy um, Sweet Potato Vine planted it right here. These will all fill in and get nice and full. But to see the difference between these lemon tarts and the size, and then right behind Jerry is where we planted the massive bed of only lemon tart. There's about a three week difference between the two of these. And um, so you can really see the difference in the size. All right, we're getting it ready to get pounded with rain. So we'll continue this tour when the rain goes away. Well, that was a fun little unexpected surprise. The rain came uh, about two hours before they said it was going to. Um, just so you have a little reference, in that 30-ish minute span of time, we got over an inch of rain, like an inch and a half. So there you go. Welcome to summer in North Carolina. Uh, we're going to continue on with the garden tour because nothing will stop a good gardener, right? What we're gonna do is focus here on the berm. Now, <laughs> We did just get an inch and a half of rain, so got a little pounded, but we did bless Jerry, got some great drone footage um, this morning before we got started. So you can see when the petunias were all nice and perky and very happy. So we're gonna walk over here and give you an update on this space. This past fall, October, we began the installation process of this berm. It is a massive berm. It's about 100 feet long. Um, depends on where you are in the berm as to how wide it is. It is a berm because it is a uh, definition splitting point between our private residence and the nursery. Yes, it is raised. People are like, it's not a berm. Berms have to be huge and tall. No, they don't. 
it's okay. So it is a berm. On this side, the house side, we are going to show you all of the gorgeousness. And I have to say that this, these annual plantings right here, um, completely Jerry's idea. Like he had this vision for what he wanted these annuals to look like. The shrubs, the perennials, the trees, he left that completely up to me. But this is his baby. And every morning we sit on our front porch and have coffee and I go, oh my gosh, I love those. Oh my gosh, I love those because they have made such a beautiful impact. We have in here the petunias. This is Supertunia um, Vista Jazzberry. So Jazzberry is the newest Vista in the series. So we have Jazzberry here all of the white on the edges this is going to be snowdrift which is around the jazzberry then we come over here and this is the supertunia mini vista yellow this is new this year and in front of that this is the supertunia mini vista white the mini vistas are more tight and compact and um, just but loaded with flowers I will say that the mini vista yellow really started showing out and outperforming the jazzberries first. Now the jazzberries have clearly caught up and are very happy and but this yellow nice tight compact beautiful blooms on it um, and has just done a really outstanding job makes a nice big bold statement behind the, the yellows is um, Holy Grail. So the Summerific Holy Grail hibiscus, they will be blooming here um, in the next couple of weeks. Big, huge, massive dinner plate blooms. When those grow and are at maturity, they will be huge. They are nice and wide. These are wider than they are tall. So it will really fill in that area. The um, plantings for the annuals are um, kind of, um, defined by the sprinter boxwoods. We literally planted the boxwoods on one day and then the next morning we planted all of these petunias. So this was again all of his idea with the sprinters defining these areas and then jazzberry, snowdrift, yellow, and white. Everything in there together. We have two Yoshino cherry trees on this side, evenly spaced. So beautiful, nice spring bloom. They will get nice and wide and fill in this area. Coming on down, we'll, we'll go this way. Um, you saw me plant the um, Senorita Blanca Cleome. So we have two, three pockets of those rather. And then you also saw me transplant this butterfly bush. So this is a pink cascade too. It was in the trial garden. I picked probably the absolute worst day to transplant it and dig it up. It was in the ground. I dug it up, brought it over on a sunny, hot day and it went limp. I mean, you could see it, but look, look what it's done. So I faithfully watered it and we got beautiful rain, but look, new growth. Everywhere where I trimmed and I pruned a little bit, we have beautiful new growth, so she is doing great. An absolute rock star performer for sure. You saw me plant um, early spring um, some of these clematis because um, I was turned on by my friend Tina this year to Brushwood Nursery. It is a family owned company in Athens, Georgia that they specialize in clematis. And so I ordered some for the backyard um, and the, then the owner reached out to me and said, hey, um, would you like to try some other ones? And I was like, sure, send me what you think I would like. So he sent me these three beautiful clematis. Um, oh gosh, the name escapes me. I want to say I did not put my markers down. I want to say it was like Hudson, Hudson Bay, Hudson Blue, something like that. Um, but he said to use it as a ground cover, which I was like clematis as a ground cover continuous bloomer of these beautiful blue flowers. So I have them in front of my October Magic Ruby Camellias. So not that they'll probably be blooming at the same time, but that beautiful repeat blooming of that blue. The clematis has done really well. This is going to be on irrigation, not currently on irrigation. Um, but just doing really nicely. And of course with the clematis, like you can move it around and spread it out. But we've got three of those in here and they are doing really well. 
Uh, the sun patients are hanging in there. The uh, coleus, this is the Color Blaze Wicked Witch, filling in quite nicely. I have had to come in here and supplement water, of course, for the sun patients because, you know, they would hit a hot day and they would just go, so keep those watered and they do quite nicely. While we're here, I know Jerry was doing the pan. We're going to pan over here so that way we won't have to come back. Um, the entrance beds are coming along. They are hanging in there doing well. Um, we do have to come back in here and add mulch and then turn this irrigation on. Once we get the mulch and the irrigation and our consistent warm temperatures hit, which they're hitting, um, this will explode and take off. But look how nicely these sun patients are doing. Again, I know you see the um, irrigation lines right there. We've not turned them on yet. So I have to come in and supplement water every couple of days if we don't get this beautiful rain but they are doing nicely as well so let's come on over to the other side of the berm and if you want specific information on like the exact trees the exact plants all that other stuff feel free to go back and look at other videos because we did in-depth videos on all of this north pole arborvitaes here um, I put them on the corner because I, they will bulk up. These are beautiful evergreen trees that um, will, are great for privacy. They will be taller, um, I want to say like in that 10 foot range, but only like three feet wide. And they've got beautiful new growth on them. So they are very happy. Um, yet all in here, man, look at all that new growth. I mean, just popping. So popping new growth, we planted these in the fall. Great echinaceas in here that's the butter pecan look at that sweet new one this year that is a double bloom yes color coded double um yep yeah. butter pecan look at that love it love it and then um, all the perennials were planted this spring so just kind of keep that in mind. The daylilies, this is blazing glory, nice yellow with kind of a, a burgundy pink center in it. So we have like swooshes and swipes of those. Just everything in here, perennials, we want an explosion of color, but this is, remember, this space has not been here for a year. So all of this is brand new. We repeat the holy grails through here. Um, this Winecraft Gold smoke bush is doing really nicely this is got gorgeous new growth on it beautiful lime green so the idea is that your holy grails nice and big and then you have this color contrast of the smoke bush um, that winecraft gold doing great here so far in our uh, north carolina garden we've got amsonia and agastache but everything like nicely doing really really well when we planted the daisies, they were in full bloom. Um, then we had to shear them back and then they are reflushing again. So this is the amazing daisy, Daisy May. Nice, beautiful color on that. And then the Pugster Pinker. Pugster Pinker butterfly bush. Um, it's pinker because they, <laughs> it's a pinker pink than Pugster Pink. And nice, big, huge blooms on it. Now, you can see that these are old blooms. You do not have to deadhead your butterfly bushes. But however, if that, you, that annoys you, not a problem. You can go in there and clip that and you will have, um, you can clean up the flower, the bushes, and they will do great. So nice big blooms on those continuous bloomer all season long. Our, um, let's see, these are little lime punches. These are little lime punches. I had to think for a minute. Little lime punches, we have three on each side. Uh, this is a thundercloud purple plum. So we have three on this side and we have three on the other side. They are getting ready to pop in color. Beautiful panicle hydrangea, three to five feet tall. So again, imagine this would be a solid hedge of this hydrangea. Chartreuse on the loose is a new nepeta from our friends at Walters Gardens. And man, y'all, this thing is a winner. I love this plant. We are currently growing it. It is not ready yet. It will be later, ready in a couple of weeks. Um, massive pollinator attractor, but the color on this, you cannot beat. Beautiful, continuous blooms, and there's pollinators on it. Even right now, after that rain, we have got little small 
pollinators, um, little wasps. The honeybees will be out back here in a little bit. They got scared off from the rain, but just a great pollinator plant that brings in a totally different color to your garden. Super easy, super low maintenance on that as well. The, um, oop, bit raised up on a Monarda. Sensation honeysuckle vine. Oh my gosh. This is a fantastic plant. You got to keep her controlled though. So you got to come in here and every so often kind of tuck her back up. But beautiful blooms on this. I'll let Jerry get out of the way so Jerry can get in there. Continuous bloomer. Um, beautiful vine that will climb basically anything. Again, you do have to support it some, but it will grow and develop. I have another one on the other end of the berm. And I just feel like they're going to let them soften the edges of the fence and do great. Then we have the Niagara Falls grass. These are repeated throughout this side of the garden, the berm, and we have some on the other side up at the top. This will be a beautiful blue grass. It will be four feet tall and four feet wide at maturity. Um, but I love perennial grasses in your garden because it just brings in such texture. We repeat more holy grails and then look at this. This is a new daylily this year. Um, <laughs> My kids love the name of this, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. <laughs> They're like, if that's not an appropriate name for a daylily or a garden plant, I don't know what is. Because sometimes in your garden, you, you give all three, right? You give that Blood, Sweat, and Tears really nice kind of a raspberry color with that nice yellow center. Love it. So imagine these being in all of their glory just like those ones that are in the cottage garden because they are still part of that rainbow rhythm series massive i mean this is they, again have been in the ground for um a, a, what a month maybe i don't even know if it's about been four months, yeah about a month this is one of my favorites this is vino verde by Jilla. it is a beautiful color and texture in your garden. It will bloom in early spring, but the color on these are fantastic. I absolutely adore them. Um, they are deciduous, but the color on this, the foliage on this is spectacular. Now, coming on up, look at this. So, Jerry, get this shot. Like, this is just such a pretty shot. You've got blood, sweat, and tears next to the Sunjoy Neo barberries with this beautiful thunderhead. Yes, I have a thunder cloud and I have a thunderhead. Thunderhead, this is a black Japanese pine, but like all these colors together. And then you have got the quick fire fab hydrangeas back here that have just started blooming within the last mm, week. Um, just glorious. And again, this is after an inch and a half of rain and the hydrangeas are still standing up. That is the beautiful thing about these panicles. You trim them every late winter by only a third or a fourth. If you take them all the way down to the ground, you won't have your strong, sturdy stems. So beautiful, gorgeous hydrangeas. Three of those encapsulating this area. More of the grasses, beautiful grasses here. Um, and then this end of the berm gets intense hot afternoon sun and it is very dry. Russian sage, oh my heavens, is she not beautiful? Like I never could understand Russian sage because I think I had it in too wet of an area. This, it loves it. Denim and lace is just beautiful. Pollinators again, I got little bees all over it so I'll stop rubbing it, but um, just a fantastic plant, beautiful, cool kind of bluish green foliage on it with the blue flowers, beautiful. Coming over here, we've got the Agastache. This is the Royal Raspberry. And then we have the um, double coated, this is the Echinacea. This is, um, all my names are running together. This is Raspberry Beret. So we got Raspberry Beret, Royal Raspberry. It's kind of the pink corner going on right here. Beautiful flocks. We've had to go ahead and prune it because it was blooming already. We trimmed it and look, flushing out beautiful new growth and a new flower bud already. That um, raspberry beret is really fun. Nice double bloom on it. And the echinaceas have just been spectacular this year. They have been glorious and beautiful. We're gonna wrap around real quick on the other side of the berm right here. And then we're gonna pop up to the 
entrance beds at the nursery because I want to show you how they are developing. But just really quickly, right through here, um, on this bed, this is the Nothofia. This is the Rocket's Red Glare, just still part of that Pyromania series from Proven Winners, but it has a nice red to yellow ombre effect on it. So these are your older blooms. The new blooms are come out nice and red, and then they will come down to a nice um, soft, creamy yellow. The Tuscan Gold, make sure I get this right, yes. Tuscan Gold Heliopsis, we have been so impressed with this plant because when we put it in, it was blooming. It has not stopped blooming and it has only grown bigger and there are buds all over them. These are a beautiful Heliopsis, sunflowers, right? Perennial plant, gorgeous color on them. We see this from the front porch and just a beautiful, beautiful display of color um, in the garden. They have not missed a beat in all the heat, the rain, doing just wonderful. Absolutely great. And then you can see again, we have um, more phloxes, more of uh, the quick fire fab panicle hydrangeas. This one seems, these two get a little bit more sun maybe. This one's a little bit more behind. It's okay, right? I know sometimes we think, oh, well, all the plants are supposed to exact, you know, act the exact same. Some are a little delayed than others, not a problem. And then ultraviolet phlox. Ultraviolet phlox, great paniculata phlox, really rich, hot, hot purple color, very ultraviolet, and is doing um, really nicely here. And again, have the Russian sage right here as well. All right. We're going to pop up to the entrance beds at the um, sign and we're going to show you that. Here we are at the uh, entrance beds to the nursery, entrance to our house, mailbox planting. You saw me plant this and look how well it has filled in. Now the portulaca is closed up because it is cloudy and we just got some rain, but they have, I mean like look y'all, massive, I told you this was going to happen, massive carpet and um, gorgeous big huge yellow flowers when they are nice and open. So this is the Mojave Yellow Portulaca. Behind it we have Diamond Snow. I may have to come in here and do a little crowd control on the Portulaca because, you know, getting a little aggressive for the Diamond Snow. And then the Rockin' Deep Purple Salvia. When I put these in, they were, they were pretty <laughs> They were pretty sad because they were like little salvia trees. I did not come in here and pinch them. I did not do that. They naturally bushed out on their own, branched out, beautiful. Like this is one plant right here. This is one plant um, and just beautiful branching on it. This is the improved version, which I love and adore. Rich, rich purple flowers. I already see we have some honeybees down here. The hummingbirds love this plant. It will get nice and tall, uh, two, two and a half feet tall, and then continue to branch out. So it'll be a beautiful hedge all in here. Very easily the diamond snow could get swallowed up between these two plants, and that's okay, because if we just have the salvia and the portulaca, boom not on irrigation. Jackson has come up here and watered it a few times for me, but other than that, it has been uh, let go. This bed is predominantly a shade bed here in the front. It does get some sun. Everything is filling in so nicely. The hostas have gotten nice and big. The sun patients are doing really well. Um, the new plantings are great. We have beautiful, the wygelias. The eucharas in here are doing quite nicely. My astilbe was, <laughs> before the deluge that came, the, uh, the astilbes were nice and upright. They'll bounce back up. This is, I think, milk and honey. And so it is doing quite nicely. Everybody's doing great. We trimmed the lower petalums when we were in here. They're bouncing back nice and thick. The um, fine laced uh, Japanese maple, this is like the, it's a Japanese name, Takimaku, something like that. Great. <laughs> you can go back and look at those other videos. Um, puffer fish. I did go ahead and replace the hydrangea that was here because it was just not performing very well. Put a puffer fish in here and it is producing nice buds on it. It's going to be delayed because it gets a little bit more shade than my full sun ones, but doing really nicely. 
And then this is just the classic Annabelle's behind it. So the Annabelle's beautiful, huge, massive blooms on them. The complaint about Annabelle's is this, that after a rain, they get so heavy with water that they collapse. But you see, like I've got two hands. Now, yes, there's dirt on it, um, but massive blooms on it. I planted these years ago. Um, so if they don't bounce up, then this is the perfect opportunity to come and snip them off. Put them in a bouquet and then they will reflush. Now see this one was not as developed, so it's still standing up nice and tall. Um, the elderberry is doing great. Everybody is doing really well in here. The caladiums, however, because we've had such a cool, wet spring, um, early summer, they're they're a little bit on the struggle bus i'm hoping that when the heat really hits they will really bounce up now here we have uh <laughs> the new woodland bed that we just installed this year this is a bed that does need some attention as far as we knew that when we created this because we have never had plants in here so we've got weeds and briars and things that have been popping up i have been so impressed with these ruby slipper hydrangeas these are oak leaves these are very nice petite they're going to be wider than they are tall but talking again about the size of the bloom so there's my hand and look how long they are they have been a beautiful creamy white and they are just starting to put on those nice rosy pink hues um, we've got new growth in here we've got new growth popping out with your oak leaves, they're called oak leaves because their leaves are the shape of an oak leaf. Um, they bloom on old growth. It is best not to prune them. So pick the right size for your space. And then the foliage in the fall is a beautiful like red color. Um, so the ruby slippers are doing great. The camellias, the hostas, everything in this bed have really been doing quite nicely. We did put this bed on irrigation. So I run it, if we don't get rain, then I run it like once a week for about 45 minutes, a nice, really deep, saturating soak with them because of our beautiful oak trees and poplar trees. They're competing for roots. Um, the roots competing for water so i make sure that i give them good water and everybody is doing really nicely in here we're just gonna have to come in here and maintain the weeds and the things that are popping up to keep those suppressed um, since this is a brand new bed again less than one year old but this is going to be a really fun bed we're actually going to be in here hopefully later this week if the weather will cooperate um, adding some more shade plants in here so that is the entrance so you've never been to Creekside, as you come through, you come on down and you're driving down to the nursery. So you can see the berm is gonna be to your left and you have, um, you can really see like the daylilies and you can see back into the backyard with those beds and you can see colors popping up. Um, yeah. It's really fun to come on in here. And then we have the other side, the companion piece of the entrance beds to the one that we showed you um, just a few minutes ago. So these beds, um, both of these beds right here along the creek, we use these are predominantly annuals. In the back of this bed, we do have shrubs. We've got more of the quick fire fab hydrangeas there on the very end. And then it bleeds in to all of the annuals. We planted this, what, two weeks ago? I think it was two weeks ago. So we've got coleus on, in a huge, massive ribbon of that down here on the end because this coleus will do sun or shade. Underneath a massive tulip poplar, this gets direct sun in the morning. If it wasn't cloudy, this would be in the sun right now. Um, these will fill in and make a beautiful hedge right here. Afternoon, it is complete shade. Um, so this area, diamond snow, the lemon blush caladiums, the coffee cups elephant ears in a fun little kind of a triangular shaped flower bed. The, um, we did these dry creek beds right here because we got wash. And you can see right here in that little deluge that we got, you can see that water came down and piled up to about right here it wasn't long enough for it to fill up, but we have had it before. And you can see here, 
where we had a little bit of wash and it will go down, but the beds themselves hold and are not being um, cut through. So this part was filled up with water, water either soaked in or trickled down. So this is working great. And then this side of the flower bed is filling in quite nicely as well. We have the graceful grasses, skyrocket grass in mass in the back. These are all annuals. Surefire white begonia, new this year. Um, mass plantings of all of this to make a huge impact. The plum dandy, plum dandy does not flower. It is just a beautiful uh, burgundy color. And then of course, more of the fantastic yellow portulaca um, in front of that. Big, huge blooms. You're just gonna have to take my word for it because they're not flowering right now because like I said, they open and close with the sun. Since it's cloudy, they are closed. And then some credible sunflowers here on the end um, to make a nice statement. So there we go. Do we wanna do the pergola bed at the nursery right quick? Yeah. Okay. So um, this year over here at the nursery, um, we just installed a flower bed with beautiful tons and tons of beautiful annuals so we're going to show you that and then i want to show you a flower bed i think we're going to see how we're going to see how it looks after this rain over there in um, the display gardens all right now so here we are in front of the nursery in this display bed that we planted um, this spring now i'm just going to go ahead and tell you right now i mean that wind and the rain hammered this flower bed so we'll come back like in a nursery tour or something and show it to you when everybody's nice and perky but i did want to give you just an update on this because we have not i don't think i've talked about this bed since we planted it so i want to just kind of give you so you can put your eyes on it right um things are progressing very nicely. Jerry did come in and got some nice mulch on it. This is not on irrigation per se, but when we're watering the nursery, um, our folks will hit this at certain, you know, certain times. Some credible sunflowers are filling in, branching quite nicely. The uh, truffle of pink gumfrina doing great. This petunia right in here, again, I apologize y'all for the rain. Um, I will come back and show you this, but this is the new for next year. It is not available. This is the Hoopla Vivid Orchid um, Supertunia, and it really like is a gorgeous, really nice, impressive petunia. It almost has like a jazzberry center with a really wide white margin on it and has been growing excellent, doing really well, um, just makes a beautiful impact. And then the salvias are doing great. Um, just everything in here is progressing quite nicely. This is a little lime hydrangea standard form, getting ready to pop in color. Um, but yeah, everything here is doing well. We will come back and visit this, like I said, when things dry out and perk up. Now, we're going to uh, make our way over to the display gardens in the, the perennial garden because the, there are some daisies that are blooming and just absolutely beautiful. So let's look over there. Last year, we partnered with our friends over at Walter's Gardens and did um, like my top picks for the perennials for the South. And so that is what this flower bed is. Perennials bloom at different times, right? So we get this beautiful continuous display of colors that come throughout. We've had the raspberry monarda that was absolutely gorgeous in the spring. What is stealing the show right now are the amazing daisies, Daisy May. Oh my word, there are, these are five plants. So one, two, three, four, five plants. Again, after an inch and a half of rain and wind, and they are standing up and doing great. Daisy May is that classic white Shasta Daisy, right? But absolutely prolific in flowers. I mean, covered. These plants have been in the ground less than a year. We planted them in, it was sometime in July when we planted this flower bed beautiful plants. So your daisies, they need the full sun and they like moisture, but they like to be well draining. Don't let them sit in water or they will rot. Huh, trust me, I know. Um, so Daisy May is doing beautiful. So we have the Daisy Mays in front of this beautiful summer of hibiscus. This is edge of night. And edge of night, if we could just hurry up and get it to bloom, edge of night, of course, obviously, dark, dark black foliage on this, but beautiful, huge, almost like iridescent pink flowers. So the white against the dark foliage, and if you had those pink flowers blooming right now, 
stunning. But even though they're not blooming at the same time, that's okay. We'll take it because you still have this beautiful contrast with one another. Stunning. And then over here, we've got the Lakota Fire Echinacea. And the, um, this is another, this is Ruby Spider as well. Uh, daisies, uh, daisies, listen to me. I got daisies on the brain. Uh, Daylilies. So everybody in here is doing great. If you come to the nursery and you're visiting the display gardens, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that they are not in tip top condition. Why are they not in tip top condition, Jenny? Well, let me tell you because we are about to begin construction on the signature garden. So Proven Winners approached us last year and asked us if we would uh, consider having a Proven Winners signature garden here at Creekside. We were honored and jumped at the opportunity. So this year we're going to start the construction process. It is going to fill in this whole area. So we have not added any new plants to these beds and the existing shrubs and perennials that are in here are going to have to get dug up because um, if they have survived and thrived in the last year, then that means that they are winners and we will reuse them either in the signature garden or we will reuse them in other gardens. So when you come, just know, I'm not even letting Jerry show you. <laughs> because it's a little embarrassing, but it is getting overgrown and that is okay because we're getting ready to destroy all of that. So we're going to, we're going to leave this bed as it is. So we will work around it and incorporate this bed into the whole signature garden um, display area, but just know it's under construction. And sometimes you just have to make a mess to make it look pretty. And we're currently in the mess stage. All right, we're going to jump back over to the house and do the patio and the backyard beds. We are back at the house now, and this is the uh, kind of the corner bed on the side of the front porch. Daylilies are directly in front of me. You were with me when we planted this just a couple of weeks ago. Kept it really simple with the Sun Patience. This is a compact purple, and then the Bewitched Green with Envy Sweet Potato Vine. Uh, got a little disheveled in the wind, but everything here is uh, growing and progressing quite nicely, doing really well. Tea olives were pruned, and then um, this is giant lamb's ear that I brought over from the nursery last year. They were little, they may have been quart size containers. They clearly have loved this area and have filled in really, really nicely. I like keeping it low in front of our units. That way, when the guys need to come and service and clean them, they have easy access to them and nothing is blocking them. This bed right here is an absolute hot mess. I'm not even going to apologize for it. That has been uh, very neglected. I hope to get to that this week. You will come along with me uh, for that journey, but hot mess express over there. So we're not going to focus on that. We're going to focus on the beautiful things back here over in the backyard bed. Um, now you're going to see some weeds in here because we have, um, I have weeded this multiple times. Weeds are very prolific right now because we have had such a wet spring, early summer, and um, yeah, they're, they're living their best life right now. But so are the perennials. This is vastly perennial beds. We have corner pockets of the new, this is the Surefire Cherry Cordial Begonia. I love these because they will do sun or shade. This is definitely going to be a more shady area back here. Um, this uh, next time that it's time, you know, time to prune the uh, maple tree right here, we'll go ahead and limb it up a little bit. But the surefires are doing quite nicely. And then in this bed, we have a lot of different varieties of daylilies. I'm going to let Jerry come back over here on my side because I want to show you some of these gorgeous daylilies. Now, throughout here, I think we have 15 or 20 different varieties of daylilies. And all of these daylilies that are in this flower bed came from my sweet friends, Jim and Wanda. Jim and Wanda, um, have a massive display of beautiful daylilies in their garden. They actually take them and show them. They have won awards for their daylilies. They were eliminating one of their beds last year because it was just too much for them to maintain. And so I said, Miss Wanda, if you will just pick me out some daylilies, she did. So if you see daylilies in here, um, they are from our sweet friends. Blueberries are blooming. I'll take a little snack here in a minute. Look at this echinacea. This is the one in a melon. One in a melon from Proven Winners. I'm gonna try to tiptoe back here. The, um, the blueberry is getting quite friendly with it um, because I want you to see how tall they are. 
excuse Emily's roast tree right there. Um, look at these. Are these not spectacular? I planted all of my echinaceas last year um, in July. It was so incredibly hot and planted them then. They have all done great. Now, I want you to look at some of these blooms on the echinaceas because I was a little worried. Do you see how these blooms right here, these petals are not fully opened like they're supposed to be? So I was concerned that maybe I was starting to get some sort of fungus, some sort of disease. Kata from Walter's Gardens was here just the other week. I asked her about them. She said, this is a result of our fluctuating temperatures. It was hot, it was cold, it's like back and forth, back and forth. And the plant just doesn't know how to react. So if you have these kind of misshapen um, petals on your echinaceas, don't worry. It is okay, you are doing just fine. My Bevan is doing well. We did have one in bloom until the uh, rains came, and uh, so it de it depetaled the uh, <laughs> the rose. This is a new David Austin that I got not too long ago. I mean, it was just very recently. So it is uh, it is hanging in there slowly, getting there. Echinaceas again. I mean, this is from Proven Winners, um, the Lakota Fire, um, or the Summer Song Fire Finch. It goes by both names. Beautiful beautiful reds and oranges in there and then we bleed on over to the achillea this is the firefly sunshine beautiful yellow um, continuous bloomer just a great sun loving plant we've got uh the this is the sombrero um i believe this is the gold i have a tag in here somewhere um but just granada gold Lovely, lovely. Um, we've got some Minarda blooming back there. This is the ultraviolet phlox that's getting ready to pop out in color. Um, but the echinacea, the echinaceas and the daylilies are the star of the show right now. Um, I have a lot of the sombrero series because they are just really great performers for us here in the South. So we've got multiple ones of those, but everybody is smelling in. I will go ahead and give you an update here on Elizabeth. Elizabeth was the other David Austin rose that I got later in the season. Again, rain was not helping, but you can see that we do have a nice little cluster of flowers right here on Elizabeth. Elizabeth is a very nice, soft, soft pink that will basically transition to white. So you can see um, an older bloom right here that is white and she is losing all of her petals, um, but yeah. So they are all doing, doing great. And then I have told you about in the lots of nursery tours about the drops of Jupiter oregano. Look at that. I mean, fantastic. This is, these are pearl glams, pearl glam, beautyberry. Uh, the bluebirds are all flying out of their homes right now. Um, so the pearl glam beautyberry is doing great. We'll get some nice height. Double play doozy spireas back here. They're kind of at the end of their first flush of flowers, but the drops of Jupiter oregano wonderful perennial chartreuse color it is currently covered in lots of little baby pollinators and it is getting ready to bloom so there you go on that um while we're here we're gonna go look at the dahlia garden because it's just right in front of me so hopefully the wind and the rain did not lay anybody down we're gonna go check on the dahlias here we are at the dahlia garden um y'all I just can't even with this garden. Um, so little backstory, long story short, last year, uh, Laura uh, from Garden Answer sent me a massive box of her dahlia tubers. And so when you're looking at the rows, the dahlias that are on currently my side, the right side of the fence, those are Laura's dahlias. Did them last year. I did not get them in the ground until um, early June. This year, they overwintered. I did not dig anybody up. Fell in love with them last year when they were blooming. I ordered a ton of my own. So the dahlias that I ordered and I planted are on the left side of the fences. So we have both Laura's and mine that I have ordered and planted. And dear heavens, it has been a grand spring, early summer for these dahlias. I'm not gonna go through all the names because I just it's, it's just too much, but 
I wanted to give you an update and show you how well these dahlias are doing. We did get that inch and a half of rain. Everybody is standing up, so that makes me happy. We have a couple limbs here and there that may have snapped, but that's okay. We can handle that. So we're just going to go through, and I just want to show you some of these beautiful um, these beautiful dahlias when I was ordering because Laura had given me some of the pompons and I love them. So I kind of ordered a little bit more of the pompons, uh, but I also ordered some nice, big, huge, you know, massive blooms as well. We're going to try to turn this. She's facing the wrong way. Um, I believe this one's called like Jennifer's Wedding. That just kind of sticks out to me. Um, but dahlias will have different bloom times, right? Just like other flowers, they have early, mid, late bloomers. Look at that yellow. Is that not spectacular? It's a shorter plant, but a massive bloom on it. Really beautiful, buttery yellow. Um, then you've got some that have completely different texture. That is the thing about dahlias. You can get them in all shapes, sizes, colors, textures. Um, then you come over here and these babies are like overachievers. You want to talk about it? So this is terracotta. These did come from Laura. Massive, huge, tall plants, very, very upright. Um, yes, I do have supports on them, but even without the supports, they were doing really well. I do want to come in and shore them up, but I'm 5'2", and these are every bit of six to seven feet tall. I mean, they're massive, very, very prolific, gorgeous colors on them. Oh, can't wait. All right, coming on over, I'll let Jerry swing around to me over here um, because they're so much fun. And so we are in North Carolina, a zone 7B. I'll just let him kind of, as I talk, let him kind of show you some of the different dahlias. But so we are in North Carolina, zone 7B. We have thick, clay soil and the concern for us is overwintering dahlias is not our temperatures because we have very mild winters in comparison to you know other zones and but our concern is will our clay soil hold too much water and will the tubers rot because we have historically very wet winters we have a lot of rain in the winter time we did not dig up one tuber and I think we, I know I found maybe two or three that rotted and the rest of them did great. We did, when we installed the, um, the beds, we did raise them up. So they are kind of quote raised beds, they're hilled up. And then we are on a slight incline. So it does kind of drain really well um, and just does, they did clearly, did great. Now, I want to show you this one. This one I very much know the name of. This sweet little pink pompon right here. This is Betty Ann. And when I saw this, I had to buy it because my mama's name is Ann and her mama's name is Betty. And so here we have Betty Ann and Betty Ann is a very tiny little petite pink pompon. Uh, but <laughs> everybody's great. Look at this dark foliage, hot like fuchsia pink purple whatever you want to call that bloom on it i mean dear heavens y'all and then we've got like the pure whites right here um just great now we've had had this one let's see did she snap yeah uh, she came very close this one has been um problematic all season it was growing sideways and then i can't tell if it snapped or it didn't snap in that wind that we got today. Um, look at this. Look. Is that not gorgeous? Just beautiful. So all of the folks um, who work here at Creekside know that they have an open invitation to come and cut flowers anytime that they want to because we have got such a prolific amount of dahlias that um, I want to share them as with many people as I possibly can. So they know that they have an open invitation that they can come and cut and share with as many people as they possibly want to because they are just gorgeous and spectacular and just so stinking cute. I mean, oh my goodness. 
just fantastic. So if you're afraid of dahlias, you don't think you could ever do them, try them. I mean, look at this. How cute and delicate is that? Just such a sweet little pon-pon right there. Um, great. So yeah, try the dahlias. Do it. Just go for it. You will be uh, very grateful. Okay, patio. We're going to the patio and then we'll be done. This is going to be the longest garden tour of all time. We're on the path from the driveway um, around the forest pansy going back to the back patio. Just wanted to show this to you. This bed goes from complete deep shade all the way up to morning sun. And then on the other side that we're going to is um, afternoon sun. Beautiful mix of perennials and shrubs in here. Love this space. We have been in here many, 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 many times. Munchkin oak leaf hydrangea is doing quite nicely. Um, but everything has developed really nice you saw me plant this unique stone planter it is filling in just beautiful um, both sides of the flower bed are doing great the generous gardener is generously growing she is currently um, out of her blooms we've got a couple here and there little buds but yeah so very large it is time for me to come in and tuck back down um, these limbs and so get her nice and snugged back in here um, we may have a bird nest in here because i just saw a cardinal fly out last year we had two bird nests in here coming around um, my david austin roses i have three different sets at mother's day we had a massive storm with tons of wind they were in full bloom and basically it laid the plants down um, so i came in here a couple weeks ago and severely pruned them but you can see they are already flushing back out with tons of new growth. This is the Ruwald doll. There are three roses in here in each clump. There are three roses. And so doing really well, we are battling Japanese beetles. They have come uh, back. This is that time of year. So if you can, if you do not want to spray for Japanese beetles, um, then you can come out here and try to hand pick them in the early morning and put them in soapy water um, if you have the time available for that. They are attracted to the flowers and the scent. So if you are okay with coming in here and pruning back your roses, that will generally eliminate the Japanese beetles because they are only on the roses. They are not made like the petals. I can't even talk the flower petals they are not on the leaves so if you um, don't want to spray and you can't come out here and pick them off then you can come and trim the the flowers and they will leave your plants alone so we have susan williams ellis right here beautiful creamy white there's the thunder we're gonna we're gonna run through this really quickly because the storms are coming again and then the poet's wife a beautiful yellow petunias beat down with rain the um, Supertunia Mini Dista Yellow, the Artist Blue Ageratum, love that. And then these hydrangeas right here, these are uh, Little Lime Punches. This will be year number three in the garden. And oh my heavens, love this plant. It has really strong, sturdy stems, clearly very strong because they didn't fall down at all, loaded in flowers, just a beautiful, beautiful plant. If you can get a little lime punch, do it. And then we have a puffer fish back here. Puffer fish got planted at the end of the season last year. These will all three grow to the same size, three to five feet. So I imagine that there will be a hedge behind this hospitality fountain from Unique Stone. That is what this is. In the rain and the wind, this is my lilac crush. There are three lilac crushes, summerific hibiscus in here. Um, yeah, they got pushed down because these are more tall upright than they are wide. So there we go, moving on. Gardenias struggling um, from the Arctic blast. They are pushing out new growth, but I need to come in here and just prune them. The pentas, mini vista whites, everybody. Little quick fire hydrangea. Yeah, a little quick fire. We grow things big here in the South because yeah, she is not so little. And, um, but everybody else in here is doing really well. The mini Vista Whites we have going around both sides of the kind of the wall here. We do use this as a seating wall when we have friends over or parties or whatever. People will sit here, 
The Mini Vista Yellow White, sorry, is perfect for this because it will fill in and it will begin to kind of come over and soften the edge of the wall, but it's not like Snow Drift. Snow Drift would come over completely and you wouldn't be able to use this wall. So the Mini Vista White is doing great, as is the Sun Patience. I think this is like blush pink. Uh, you saw Jerry really, really prune the uh, Sprinter Boxwoods. They have completely flushed out in new growth and are doing well. We're gonna hit, we're gonna hit up here in just a second, but look at the blue chiffon. So this is a Rose of Sharon. It is in a standard form, so it's in a tree form. We bought it that way from a nursery, but blue chiffon look at that this is the first real flush of flowers that i have seen i knew she was getting ready to pop and explode in color but look at that so the chiffon series is going to be um set less seed because it has that um that double bloom on it it can set some seed so if roses of sharon are a problem for you then obviously you know not to plant a bunch of those. Depends on where you are in the country. Now, we're gonna pop up here on the deck because I cannot wait to show you how the deck boxes have filled in. You saw me plant these deck boxes. Got this idea from friends of ours that have basically their raised boxes, right? Built sitting on top of the deck. Filled completely with potting soil and I love planting these uh, with beautiful color. I don't know what else to say than, oh my heavens. Um, <laughs> these have surpassed any kind of expectations that I could ever possibly have. And I've only water soluble fertilized these one time. I planted these, gosh, would have been April, I think I planted these. I'd have to go back and look. Um, but, and when I planted them, I told you I left a lot of room. Like you could see visible space in these boxes and they have thrived. This is the new pink cashmere superbina of Urbina from Proven Winners available next year. So pink cashmere will be available spring of 2024. This is the most happy, aggressive plant and it's beginning to rain so I'm going to talk really fast. Fantastic, gorgeous verbena. The saffron finch Super Tunia. This will be available next year as well. Saffron Finch is a beautiful Super Tunia, nice, soft, buttery yellow, and I have it paired with that Mini Vista White. I mean, this has, this whole box, y'all, has done great. We've got Pentas in here, Sun Patience. I do have Plum Dandy. Plum Dandy is, uh, is getting plum smothered out by the other plants. And we believe that this Superbina has a delicious little fragrance to it, a very nice, light um, fragrance that just smells amazing. We do have the um, Selenia begonias. They too are getting a little bit smothered out. But I think the key, as the rain comes, the key to their great success, one, they're obviously the genetics of the plants are, are just fantastic, but I completely replaced all of this potting soil in these boxes this year. Um, I do it about every two years and using high quality potting soil and amendments makes a massive difference. When we planted this, I showed you exactly what the products I used, the black gold compost, we put some biotone in there, the Proven Winners Continuous Release Fertilizer. So go back, I will have it linked for you. You can go back and see how I planted this and those amendments I used. So by investing in um, high quality products and spending the extra time to clean out the boxes and put new soil in, you get these gorgeous results and it has saved me time that I'm not having to come out here and constantly feed these plants because these are very heavy feeders. In order to produce all of these beautiful flowers, they have got to have lots of food. So don't forget about your soil and your soil amendments. It makes a huge difference. All right, we're gonna finish this since the thunder and the rain's coming back again. The Selenia Yellow Begonia, this will be available next year. I did two hanging baskets of just the Selenia Yellow. There are three plants in each of these baskets. These baskets are probably 14 inches in diameter. Um, cocoa lined, not on irrigation. I just water them every couple of days and they have done amazingly well. Again, I 
fertilize them one time, I believe. And um, again, high quality potting soil compost in the bottom makes a huge difference. Beautiful, beautiful plants. And then you can see from a distance the, uh, the uh, incredible hydrangeas. We're just gonna show you from here since the rain and the thunder is coming again. We planted those this spring. Um, so this garden tour, the weather did not exactly cooperate, but you know what? That's gardening. We just rolled the punches around here. So we're just glad that we basically got in. I think all the gardens, there probably is some more things that we could have shown you, but we're just grateful that the Lord one is giving us rain because we need the rain um, and that he gave us this time that we could come here and show you these gardens. We so appreciate you. We hope that these videos really, that you are inspired by them, that they are informative and that they are fun. We fully recognize that most people don't own a nursery and sit on eight and a half acres and have the number of plants that we have available to us. But if you can find one plant that you love and you put it in your garden, then this is all worth it because we really want to inspire you. Whatever your space is, whether you are in the middle of the country with a ton of land, or if you are in an apartment in a city and you have a balcony and you can have one pot on your balcony or your patio, then there is something here for you to be inspired and be informed about. And that is what our prayer is for you as our viewers and as our followers. Um, so as always, we so appreciate you. Thank you for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a fantastic day. We're gonna enjoy the rain. Bye friends.